What's up guys, it's Brad from Letter Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the seventh and final new shot that we created for the new City Builder 3D asset-based add-on trailer. As previously mentioned, these are not really tutorials, but hopefully can give some ideas on how quickly you can create some cinematic city flyover shots inside of Blender fairly quickly utilizing our assets. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our scene set up here. As you can see on the left side, we have our world view of our scene. And then on the right side, we have the view from our camera. And as I've said before, this is one of my favorite ways to work since you can more easily work in the left side, but you can also see where you need to place your objects in the right panel here through your camera view once you've uh, animated the camera move that you want. Anyways, this is the camera move that we've created for this shot. We've used our cable cam cinematic movement rig to uh, kind of create this uh, shot that's kind of pushing in while rotating around our uh, city assets in the center of our scene here. And as you can see here, if we zoom in, we have our cable cam pan and tilt control here, which is uh, animated to uh, give a little bit of uh, rotation and uh, parallax in our shot. And then uh, by our camera, you can see that we've just animated our cable cam base here to uh, kind of push in and create that cinematic helicopter style flyover shot as well. And uh, we've just placed a few of the small and medium sized new Soviet assets from City Builder 3D above our ground plane here. We've used uh, Soviet Large 1, Soviet Large 3 several times, Soviet Large 4 a few times as well, Large 5, and some of the medium assets as well using uh, Soviet Medium 1, Soviet Medium 4, and Soviet Medium 5. And again, we're just duplicating them and placing them and scaling them in different ways and create a little bit more realistic look. So this is essentially our scene set up here. As you can see, one of my favorite assets modeled by Hubert in this video is this uh, Soviet Medium 1. Just because of the shape of it, you can kind of place in different ways to create kind of city squares like we've done here with this kind of circular, almost coliseum type look. You can kind of create barriers with it and uh, create some variation within the rest of the more uh, traditional style buildings. But a lot of different assets to play around with. As you can see, in working through these various projects, what I do is I place all of these small and medium sized assets in the shot very specifically where I want them and then for whatever space that I need to fill in with more assets I'll just uh, add a ground plane as you can see here and then I'll create a particle system like I've done here on this plane that distributes some of the assets along it um, to kind of fill in the gap so what we've done here to kind of fill in the gaps of our scene in a more subtle way that's uh, kind of using those smaller assets closer to the ground to fill in that space and uh, as you can see here we've used 2,000 particles Particles, distributing these two uh, Soviet assets on the side here we've used let's see Soviet small one and Soviet medium three and we've added these to a collection called buildings and as you can see here when we uh, enable our particle settings here and uh, increase the viewport amount you can see how especially on this right side how these assets distributed on this particle system kind of fill in the space in the background to create a much larger scale city so that's what we've done here in a lot of these shots in addition to this we've also added our sky background photo here as you can see if we select it we've just used our photo of Seoul South Korea to uh, kind of project onto this plane in the background here using the import as planes option and then we've just turned that image that we've imported into an emission layer so it just acts as a background plate for the rest of our scene creating another layer of depth that's uh, actually helping to create the environment and light the scene as well um, but yeah that was our background um, we've also duplicated this uh, city photo as well to uh, put along the side here and that's just so that we can emulate some more reflective surfaces closer to the camera so that there's more realistic environmental lighting similar to kind of an HDRI. We didn't end up using an HDRI for this shot. We've actually just added under the world settings to create that ambient light. We've just added a sky texture with a strength of 1.24 and then we played around with the turbidity a little bit and the sun direction as well and that's just to create that ambient lighting and then we've also added two suns to our scene to kind of create some layers of light and dark in our actual city here and if we select one of them here and go to the lighting panel you can see that we've increased the strength to 2.5 and then made them a little bit warmer orange color so that it creates a little bit more of a sunlight feel anyways in our layer tab we've exported both a combined beauty pass and a mist pass for compositing and then in the compositing tab we've uh, exported the file output for our mist pass and then our composite uh, combined beauty pass will be uh, exported here in the output settings wherever we choose use it to be in the OpenEXR file format at 1080p resolution and 40 samples. All right, guys, so inside of After Effects, we have a pretty basic composite going on here. I'll just go ahead and play through it really quickly. 
As you can see, we have some uh, atmosphere going by the camera and in the background in different areas. And we've also composited our mist pass and added some color correction to the final shot. And I'll just go through it layer by layer really quick, just so we get a better idea of what's happening here. The first layer that we started with is of course our beauty pass, which of course by itself doesn't look very organic, but provides you with that base level of detail to play around with. Then after our beauty pass at the bottom here, we've added our mist pass on top of it. And that's going to add that procedural mist that creates that atmospheric fall off in a very organic and realistic way and as you can see here if we solo it really quick you can see that it's going to add more mist in the background and then less mist over the objects that are closer to the camera here in the foreground and uh, we've just played around with the opacity to change the amount of mist we add to the scene overall and after both the beauty pass and the mist pass added on top of it as you can see we have a whole bunch of different live action atmospheres that we've added to our scene here and what we've done here we'll go ahead and turn them on really quick but what we've done here is we've turned them into 3D layers in our scene and then we've used the After Effects camera tracker to create a 3D camera from our beauty pass and then use that 3D tracking data to place our atmospheres in different areas of our scene so that when that 3D camera moves through the space, the atmospheres will move accordingly as well. And uh, as you can see here, if we uh, go ahead and turn off the beauty pass and just leave everything else on, you can see what we've done here. I'll just go ahead and play through it here. As you can see, some of the mist is moving past our camera here in the foreground very quickly since we've moved it closer to the camera in Z space and then we have some atmospheric elements here to break up our mist pass in the background that just kind of stay in their spots in the environment themselves and this is what's going to help create some of that organic depth in the mist itself by creating a little bit of variation in the atmospheric fall off for a little bit more realistic result anyways to finalize our setup here what we've done is we just added a basic adjustment layer and a letterbox with the black solid up here and then under the adjustment layer, we've played around with the Lumetri color correction. We've added a uh, Fujifilm look 250D to all of our new City Builder 3D shots with the Soviet assets. And uh, then for this specific shot, I also played around with the shadow and highlight tilt as well as the color wheels as well to get a little bit different look for this shot. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. This is the seventh and last 3D scene and compositing breakdown for our new City Builder 3D asset-based add-on trailer. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what kind of video breakdowns and tutorials you'd like to see next. I'll see you guys next time.